And that was the lead-off track from the new CD, which features a great artist and special friend of ours here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and G. Dassault, Mr. P.C. Munoz with his new project, 20 Haiku, and that is uh, the opening track from the record. And we've got a great time in store for us because we have the talented artist on the line right now, Mr. P.C. Munoz. How you doing, P.C.? Doing great, Joe. Thanks a lot for having me. Always nice to have you on the program, and uh, you know you're a versatile artist. And th this is a different project from uh, PC Munoz and the Amen Corner. Tell us about the uh, inspiration for you for Twenty Haiku. Okay, yeah, you know I've always, um, I mean, as you know, you know a lot about my work with the group and uh, PC Munoz and the Amen Corner. And one of the things that I really like uh, about live performances is when you're on stage and you're in the middle of a song that's, you know, very well rehearsed and, and everybody knows it, but musicians are always throwing in a little extra thing, a little extra lick here or something, or, you know, just a, something that they improvise on the spot to throw in because you're vibing off of each other and off of the crowd. And I love that. I love those moments. And um, one of the things I wanted to do with this particular project, which um, has haiku poetry with improvised music, was to kind of distill those kind of moments, or almost force those kind of moments, by bringing in musicians in, having them interact with a poem only, I just put the poem in front of them, no, I had no beat, I had no musical direction other than read that poem and play what your soul says to that, and that way sort of force them to, to come up with an inspired moment right then, and we only did two takes too, so you had to bring it, or you know, you went home feeling not so good. Well, for those of us who studied, uh, poetry and haikus and uh, high school and college. A little refresh, of course, even for myself on, on the structure of the haiku and how did you get into that form? Um, haiku is, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's a very economical Japanese poetry style. It has a total of 17 syllables traditionally. Uh, five syllables in the first line, seven syllables in the second line, and five syllables in the third line. And... Um, you know, a lot of modern English poets have actually changed that structure. They, they've made it even more economical because they feel that you can express more in English than you can in Japanese, so they shrunk it even more. But um, I've stuck with 575 because it has a good foundation for rhythm and for the spoken word stuff, so I kind of stuck with that. Um, and I've always loved it. I mean, you know, like you mentioned, most of us learn about it in school, and I learned about it from uh, a great teacher named Sharon Kamimoto, and she taught, and she was also real crucial in encouraging me to write when I was a very young child, and um, I've always wanted to do something uh, using haiku and, and music, but, you know, it's, anytime you're mixing poetry and music, you're just on this side of being kind of precious, you know, so I wanted to make sure that if I did this, it was both, um, it was cool, you know, and not just sort of self-indulgent or, or just too artsy for its own good, you know? For our listeners right now, PC Munoz is our special guest here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and G. Dusso here at WVOF. And you can go to his website, PC Munoz, M U N O Z dot com. Also, the new website, which is really cool, uh, 20haiku.com. And uh, we definitely encourage you to buy the CD because there is a special treat in there that you only can see if uh, you purchase the CD. You can check out. Uh, the different art and interpretation on there. Tell us about the design of that website. Really nice. Thanks a lot. Yeah, um, once I was done with the um, with the twenty haiku and the, and the musicians, um, my art director and I were talking about how to include you know visuals in this thing. And one of the ideas we had was to bring uh, visual artists into a studio environment and kind of do the same thing: give them a haiku and then have them all sketch a little doodle or something, and then we'd use that in the booklet. Um, but instead of doing that, we ended up, we, we started that idea and, and broadened it up a little bit to include all kinds of artists. And um, That was partially inspired by a friend of mine um, here in the Bay Area named Steve Lusso, who, who did a series of um, pictures and poems that were really good, and I liked them a lot. And I thought, yeah, what if you broaden that and, you know, involve sculptors and, and just all kinds of artists and so that's what we did, is I, and I basically used the same process as I did with the musicians, where I, I gave the visual artist a haiku, and I said, you know, what do, what do you, you know, feel from that? And I, you know, obviously they got a little more time than the musicians. 
musicians had to come up with stuff in seconds, but the visualized got, you know, a couple of weeks or so to, to get the piece together and, and, um, and then we put it up on the site. And like you said, um, it's actually, uh, it's a private part of the site. And when you get the CD, which is five bucks, you get, um, you get a, the passwords to access the exhibit, which has all of the artwork that go with the haiku. And, um, and when we go around doing this, this thing live, it's really fun because, you know, we, we have sometimes we have the artists there and we do live haiku and I invite different people to recite, kids, you know, if there's improvising musicians in the town where we're in, then I'll invite them to come down. And I invite poets to send in haiku ahead of time and I'll recite those. We, we put them up on a screen and stuff. So it's, it's a real fun sort of community, community building thing. And when you get the CD, you recommend uh, opening that booklet and uh, using it to uh, on the first listen, right? That's right. Joe, you're so on point. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's true. When uh, I do, in the intro to the CD, I, I do recommend that when you get it, the first time it is kind of important to soak in the text while you're listening to these little moments. And... Um, you know, then after that, you know, you might just have it on in the background. You might notice, you know, an instrument one time, or you might notice um, the way I say something or, or the content, the actual words, or you might um, notice how they morph together. There's different things to notice with each listen. So we're going to listen to the second offering on this new CD from PC Munoz, 20 Haiku. You can go to both his websites, PC Munoz. Dot com and also 20haiku.com, haiku spelled H-A-I-K-U dot com. We'll listen to uh, the second song on this and come back and speak once again with PC there from 20 Haiku. You hear some definite uh, uh, experimentation with the musicians and PC was talking about the difference. Uh, we were talking off air about the difference of being a band leader for a funk band, whereas uh, a little bit is out of your control instrument wise when you're letting the musicians free reign how how much of a change is that for you and you know what's it like well it's it's funny i mean during the recording process it was actually a big deal for me as a songwriter to surrender the whole musical context to someone else because i'm so used to sitting and 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 you know coming up with the music as well as the words and making sure they match together but on this project i just I just wrote the poems and I picked players that I thought, okay. And I also hand-picked, I matched them to, to a poem I thought would resonate with them. So um, it, that was, you know, it was, it was difficult to, to surrender that, that control of, of the music and say, okay, um, you are going to provide the sole context. You are deciding what this sounds like musically. And uh, I'm glad I did it, though. I mean, it taught me a lot about trusting and... and uh, also sort of confirmed that I have good taste in players because these guys just really came through. Now, is it more economical taking a band out with these instruments or, or, or about the same as taking a funk outfit out? Um, it's, it, it depends on the type of show, but, um, you know, obviously with the funk band, I have, you know, a couple background singers and we got um, it's just, just uh, quantity-wise in terms of players, it's more, so it's a little more expensive but uh, and with, with the 20 IQ you can tear it down just too little to a tree or a quartet or something and, and do it a little bit differently so um, it's probably a little more economical to do these types of shows but um, it depends on how many players you got like this I just did this uh, debut thing at, at a museum in the city of San Jose here in the Bay Area which was just an awesome event there were I think nine musicians involved in that thing and it was uh it's great. I mean, I'd love to do that every time. Now, uh, our listeners definitely should check out PCMunoz.com. And I was on your site the other day. I really got to thank you for including our radio show up there. And you also have a bunch of your friends up there. I was on some of their websites as well, some really talented artists that you guys collaborate with. Um, right. Yeah. So so you've been really busy. Um, people can go up there. you got great photos up there documenting where you guys have been touring. Um, you did a couple tours. Tell us about where you went and uh, some upcoming plans. Yeah, we went um, basically up and down the West Coast, shows in, in uh, L.A. and shows in um, uh, San Diego and Portland and Seattle, uh, some of the little uh, surrounding suburban towns in those areas. We just had a great time, especially up in the Pacific Northwest where uh, 
it was real special for me personally to to get up there and drive through um, Kurt Cobain's hometown and uh, to also go up there in Seattle and, um, and be around um, Hendrix's home base. And it, it was just um, it was just very cool to get up there and, and play to the people there. <clears throat> and also, you know, of course, it's always great to play in Southern California where we love to play. It's a place called Temple Bar. And um, in fact, though, I think, I don't know if we talked this we talked about this show when we, you and I last talked, but uh, Jackson Brown came out and joined us at one of the shows in Southern California. Yeah, I think it was right around that time, yep. Yeah, and um, that was um, that was a real special treat. Um, and, you know, it's always great to um, play shows with people and meet artists. I met this great um, rapper named Pigeon John. You might have heard of him. He's um, he's uh, on the current Black Alicious album. Mm-hmm. And... Um, we we did a show with him down at Temple Bar, and just the whole you know, just it's funny as you as you're on the road, you just run into a bunch of people. You get put on the same bill, and you or you play the night before or something, and you end up meeting them. Uh, it's always cool. Well, one consistent thing that I I can see uh, from you on the road in your stage performance, you are one sharp dresser. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Is that, that where a lot of the money goes? Yeah, that's where it all goes. It's, <laughs> The bright suits. Right, right. Yeah, it's um. Thank you. Where'd you get that uh, taste for for nice clothes and, and style from? You know, I think it's funny because a lot of people um, they know I'm a huge, I'm a Minneapolis music fanatic. You know, mm-hmm. right. so uh, so everyone always assumes it's more today, and there's some truth in that. But I think it goes back just a little further back to Kid Creole. Oh, one of my favorites. Yeah, it's because. I mean, I just love August Darnell. I just think he's a genius. And I've always been amazed at how he's kind of, um, he has this fiercely intelligent writing, but then he does this sort of um, nonchalant stage persona, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, he's, he's saying these really incredibly intelligent things in his lyrics, and funny things, you know, sort of um, witty, like in the old Cole Porter type of songwriting style. And... Um, but then he's on stage, he's got this kind of a slick and smirky persona, which always kills me. But the thing about August Darnell, uh, Kid Creole, is that he's, um, he always looks great, and he's always got the cool suits. And um, I'd say that, for me, the, that attraction to the suits is, uh, is a bunch of things. It's a little bit of a nod to the Pachuca tradition here in California, and it's also um, uh, uh, definitely a nod to, to Kid Creole and to... Um, to uh, to Morris and those guys. So uh, PC Munoz, a guest once again right here on the Upper Room, and uh, we're here at WVOF. We'll come back and uh, talk more with PC. He's coming to the East Coast for uh, some some events, and uh, we'll find out more about what's going to be happening later this year and early next year. We'll listen once again to more music from 20 Haiku, which is available at 20haiku.com, pcmunoz.com, and we'll come back and speak once more with PC Moon. Back here at WVOF in the Upper Room, Joe Kelly here, and my special guest on the other line out of the Bay Area in California is Mr. PC Munoz. And and uh, we mentioned before you are planning to come to the East for another project which you're involved. You're, you're always busy with your own group and different things. What, what's happening with the High School Reunion? That's a High School Reunion is a compilation CD put together by American Laundromat Records out there, um, out your way, in, uh, I believe, in Long Island. And um, so that CD, it's really a great project. It's, it's um, today's indie artist covering um, all the songs from the great uh, teen movies of the 80s, like the songs from Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink and Fast Times and, um, and Valley Girl and um, basically you know, all the John Hughes movies and things like that. Um, for those, all of us who grew up, you know, uh, as young as teenagers in the '80s, or young people in the '80s, it's, um, it's you know, it's a fun flashback. And um, I cover a song called "I Go Crazy," which was in some kind of wonderful, and it was performed by Flesh Balu. And it's kind of a little, sort of a goth pop hit. It's like, um, it's very guitar based. The original is very guitar based. And what I did was I stripped it way down to a funky beat and a funky bass line and I just I drastically changed it so I hope the art the original artists don't mind 
Um, but as I do, I love the original. I just wanted to do something a little bit different. And, um, um, and my track is included on that record. And um, I've been talking to the label heads about their release party. And when I get the final confirmation of when and where it is, uh, I'd like to go and hang out. Like I said, when I'm there, I'd love to shoot over to Connecticut and meet you guys. Oh, we would love to have you here. And uh, I'm sure, sure you dig it out our way. So you're uh, hoping to... Uh, I, I read that... Uh, you guys, the Amen Corner, writing some songs for 2006. You got any rough demos already recorded? Yeah, actually, there is a song in the can um, called Wish I Knew, which is a song that um, uh, is just knocking them dead live, especially on tour. We had people, um, kind of a, sort of a gospel song, and people were coming up to us in tears afterwards asking for it. And, uh, and I hadn't tracked it yet. I actually wrote that song like... Um, about six years ago, and I had just introduced it to the group, and we had just uh, arranged it together, and um, at the time, I hadn't thought about tracking it, or I just thought it was a cool thing to throw in the set, but um, it became so popular on the road with people saying how much they were moved by it, um, that I said, okay, we got to get in there and track it, so we, the thing uh, we're doing now um, with the new songs is, uh, the new AMA Corner songs is, um, tracking them live, because I really haven't done a lot of that, because usually I'll go in and, and, and do a massive amount of overdubs. Just bring in one musician at a time and work with them one at a time and start and build tracks and then um, add the little things that I want to add when, you know, by myself and stuff, but in this case, I really wanted to um, make sure we got everybody in the Amen Corner in the studio together and, and just vibe in the way we do live, because the truth is, you know, as cool as that record sound, um, to see it live is like, it's, it's even better. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so what I was trying to catch with, with these uh, live recordings um, is uh, is the way we sound when we're playing it together. And uh, this first one is, is uh, very cool. I just need to finish mixing. I just haven't had um, enough time to mix it because I've been uh, producing a couple of records for a couple of other artists. And uh, once I wrap that up, I'll be able to mix uh, some of the AMA Chorus stuff and get it out for uh, 2006. So uh, I'm going to get into the last track off the 20 Haiku release, available at 20haiku.com, and then we'll have uh, PC one final segment if you got some time. Absolutely, man. All right, this is off 20 Haiku. PC Munoz here. Haiku, the final track, and some really interesting uh, words from PC Munoz and great uh, experimentation from the varied artists on there and you know in between songs pc was giving me the abridged version of uh the background of all the artists but uh man i, I know you 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 said somewhere in the line of notes on on your uh website you were kind of a, a tyrant in the studio working with it was a different form but uh it came out really nice yeah i mean you know they were all game for it that was the thing if when i first engaged the artist if i sensed any kind of like you know funny feelings or, you know, I just sort of let it go, decide, okay, they, maybe they can't handle this process. But um, most of the people that I chose um, were game for it right away. And, uh, you know, we're excited to be uh, to be part of something like this because it's an unusual thing to to go in and to, um, you know, be done, first of all, to be done in a couple minutes. That's really unusual. Um, you know, because basically, especially if, you know, if it was just an instrument like flute where, we just set up a mic, you walk in and do your thing. Um, of course, this, you know, we have a few drummers on there, and that took a while to set up. But in general, people walked in, did their take, and left. And um, that was kind of nice for them, because it's usually not something musicians can do. They're usually stuck in the studio for hours. Um, yeah, and I did stick to the process, where I didn't show them the haiku until right before we, we tracked them. And some people did ask for <laughs> to see it ahead of time, but um, I said no. Okay. Hey, PC Munoz, another great feature on your website, uh, PCMunoz.com, which I've, I've really dug, is uh, your discussion and, and respect for some of your favorite music growing up and, and what you're digging today. Um, it's a section, I believe it's uh, VCV? Yeah, VCV, uh, verse, chorus, verse. Now, now, where was your idea for, for talking about, I mean, you, you tackle Earth, Wind & Fire, Serpentine, Fire, Fire and uh, Prince's Head and many other songs, uh, man, some some cool stuff. How did you decide to add this to your website? Um, you know, it's funny. I was um, talking to my wife about um, 
about uh, different things for the website, and, and different people had asked me, uh, you know, why don't I um, put more, um, make some of the, the sermons and stuff I do live, you know, some of the things I do when I talk about the songs, uh, the story behind the songs, and why don't I put those on the website, or, um, or why don't I, you know, do some more prose type of writing and put it on the website. Um, and my wife and I have been talking about, you know, a way to sort of incorporate that and um, sort of my love for, you know, all of, all of pop music history and find a way to do that. And, um, one of the things that um, it became apparent to me was I really wanted to talk about um, how I arrived at my particular aesthetic, you know I mean? It's, a, it's, it's been a vast array of influences. So I thought um, maybe if I, you know, kind of put it out there and describe, you know, how these things hit me and, and inspired me, that um, first of all might explain a little bit of, you know, how I got to my own sonic approach, and also it might turn some people on to uh, some artists they've forgotten or some songs they've forgotten or uh, some things they never heard of and they could check out. All available. Uh, just spend some time at PCMunoz.com, and uh, right now you can go to 20haiku.com to uh, get the latest CD from PC Munoz, uh, working with his own record label, b Vine and uh, Talking House, um, collaboration with them. Um, you will be on the road, uh, I'm sure, for 20 Haiku and the dates uh, coming up on your website, so I'm, I'm sure you want want to get people out to the shows for that. That's right, yeah. We have um, a couple of Bay Area shows in January, and then it looks like some Southern California shows, and again, looking at Pacific Northwest. And um, and what I'm hoping to do is when I do go out to the East Coast uh, uh, for the CD release party out there, I'd like to you know, see if I can get in with some some of the museums out there and you know, get them to uh, turn down the 20 Haiku. It's been... Um, after, you know, I think I mentioned to you, you might have seen that it was recommended in the Wall Street Journal. Oh, okay. Kind of, uh, um, that was kind of cool. It was recommended yeah. alongside, you know, some pretty um, uh, big authors and stuff. So I liked that because that helped a lot in terms of people, um, you know, um, understanding it and, and you know, the, getting it in the spotlight. So um, I'll be talking to some of the museums out there and hopefully be able to do some of the shows, um, you know, somewhere other than the West Coast because I'd really like to, you know, um, get out there and do some of the haiku stuff there. And you're an international artist, you know, your background and everything like that. So that, that's, right. yeah. Now, uh, a lot of our listeners know you from PC Munoz and the Amen Corner. We're going to feature a couple tracks from your previous albums, and we'll go right into something from California right now. Um, what's the late? Have you, have you kept in contact with Jackson and, and uh, Fink? Any of those guys? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I talked to Jackson just a couple weeks ago and talked to Matt. Um, a few months ago, he's been, he's been very busy. They're both extremely busy, uh, but yeah, we keep in touch, and uh, um, and you know, of course, uh, we'd love to work with both of them again because it's uh, it was so fun to, to work out California with them. Matt's got a lot of cool things coming up, where he's got um, and you probably I don't know if you've had him on recently, but um, he's got this cool thing, kind of techno thing that he did in Europe. Oh, I read about. It. I haven't had him on for that, but I read about it in a uh, music magazine. Yeah, and that's um, that's that's very cool. And I'm um, doing a lot of production work over there at Starview, and um, just keeping real busy in Minneapolis. And Jackson just released his um, solo acoustic record, which is a uh, you know, cold from uh, a bunch of acoustic solo acoustic shows he did uh, all over the world. Um, you know, it's a great way to encounter his music. Just that, uh, just him and his guitar or keyboard and voice. It's a really, really great record. So I got thank you, PC, stopping by again, and uh, have a nice vacation. Thanks a lot, and Joe. Thanks a lot for having me and for all the support for you know the for different projects. You know. Yeah, and I'm sure there're going to be a lot more projects. With, you're still a young cat, so you know many more appearances on the show. Thank you, man. Yeah. So please go to twenty haiku dot com, pick up the latest uh, release from PC Munoz, and also PC Munoz dot com and uh, sign up for his mailing list, and he promises uh, no spam, just important news, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get into something right now from California. This is PC Munoz and the Amen.